I have to keep this connected because there's so much drain out there. This doesn't have a very healthy power supply. Well, shall we start? Yeah. Oh. I think there's like there's We have almost four thousand. Um, any announcement? guys want to make? I think James will be making an announcement later if James is not here. Okay, so I think we can start. Okay. Yeah. Hello everyone. My name is John Wolf, and uh, I put my website on there because uh, if you're interested in these slides they're on the website. Uh, I think it's uh, I would bring up the website but I've got everything connected to this router right now. I don't want to break the connection. But uh, if you go there, um, you can find uh, the club meetings. And uh, actually, on the, very, on the index page, it, it'll lead you right to this tonight's thing. Hi, Jim. And then there's a, there's a link there that'll take you right to the slides, if you're interested in the slides. So the topic for tonight is uh, the Internet of Things, which implies a networking of things. And... Um, there we go. So here's your typical uh, home automation guru. So I want to take the Internet of Things and focus it on to uh, home, uh, home automation. But this concept, of course, comes out of, you know, the military could have a, a swarm of drones with, with uh, low light television or infrared cameras. And they can all be networked back to a command center. I mean, you can take this concept. Um, what I'm getting at is all of these pieces that make this possible have, are well known now. So now it's just a mix of bringing them all together to where you can use them for something. So you can go very elaborate, something extremely complex. Um, I just picked this one to help explain the basic te uh, technology because it's a lot simpler. So we'll stick with home automation versus taking over the universe. So here's what I'll talk about. You know, kind of what is this internet thing? Using JavaScript as a programming language, that may be uh, something new. Uh, it is, if you're a guy in the little C, C++, Python, Java type programmer. Um, but you'll see why that fits into this perfectly. And um, we're going to use the MQTT uh, data handling protocol um, versus something like HTTP. So uh, we're going to use not the whole internet um, like we would uh, use HTTP, but we're going to be on a local area network. And this is a perfect um, protocol to pass messages around in a local uh, area network. And we can hook everything up wirelessly. Um, there's a Raspberry Pi right here, which is got a Wi-Fi dongle on it, and this is going to be our server. And um, then these other devices here um, will be the clients. And this is a a uh, technology we'll we'll discuss um, that's similar to hooking up an Arduino, but it has the Wi-Fi and a little processor and a FIDI interface, all in a tiny little. Um, inexpensive uh, chip. And I think everybody's familiar with Arduino. We put a, a an Ethernet, I mean, we put a Wi Fi uh, card on them and things in. So, what is, what are we talking about here? Um, basically, the Internet of Things is anything you can network together and uh, use a browser as the interface to talk to it. So you can put it on your smartphone, you can put it on a computer, put it on a tablet, you can put it on a display in your house um, that networks out to devices. So this Internet of Things is just a buzzword, but uh, it's a huge market. Virtually anything and everything you can think of can be um, uh, brought into a, a data network now because of these little microcontrollers. So, um, you can report uh, remote sensor data, temperature, uh, vibration, sound, whatever you're measuring. Uh, you can take a simple, inexpensive device. And um, for instance, uh, Texas Instruments has made a fortune 
by having a little um, uh, Wi-Fi um, microcontroller equipped with a coin battery that'll run for 10 years and produce data. And that's, they put them in all of these electronic uh, uh, meters for cars, you know, parking meters. And so you can put a credit card down in a parking meter and, and, and that thing will run for 10 years. So those are the sort of things that have been popping out of this. And, um, and the whole automation is just fun. I mean, just it's like model railroads. Once you get started, you can't stop spending all your money hooking stuff up to do senseless things. Um, and it's a way to burn up all those IP addresses. <laughs> so this is what I'm talking about. Up here in the upper right-hand corner is our browser-based whatever, be it a smartphone, laptop. And we're going to connect it to a server, in this case a Raspberry Pi, and that's going to form our little local uh, area network. And then we're going to connect uh, our server up to various clients, whether they be Arduinos or these ESP devices or some other device. I'll show you another way to hook this up through a radio link. Um, this guy right here is a little radio transmitter on 433 megahertz uh, to commercial devices. Um, I got one down here. <laughs> um, uh, everything's kind of crunched in here, but I got a picture. Um, but then the, you can hook anything to it, you know, a CO2 sensor, gas sensor, you know, uh, motion detectors, turn lights on, whatever. Now, the other point is, if you want to talk to the outside world, then you've got to get from our little local area network out through your firewall. So you either put a pinhole through your, your firewall, uh, your modem, or you use some service like this uh, G-Block that uh, will provide you with a, a, a DNS capability, in other words, a, some kind of a domain name uh, to where you can, uh, that, Raspberry Pi will have an IP address out in the real world. I won't talk about that part tonight. We'll just talk about this local area network. Um, but you can always do that. And those technologies can get quite complex. And there's so many of them, so much variety, so many ways to go about doing that, that I'll leave that for another discussion. So what's so special about JavaScript? You know, uh, if you're a serious C guy, you know, you could have care less. But you need to pay attention to what's going on in the JavaScript world because it, it's, a, it's, it's the 500 pound gorilla in the middle of the room. Um, it's always been um, centered on web development, web pages, building websites, because it's the way to make web pages dynamic. And uh, it's been so effective, it even pushed Microsoft off the table in there their attempt to try to take over um, making pages dynamic with uh, their Microsoft script or whatever they call it. Um, but the thing that made it uh, effective is um, it doesn't matter when something happens. You don't know when somebody's going to push a button or click on something on a web page. But when they do, you want to react to it. So it's asynchronous. That's one of its features that uh, we're going to capitalize on. The other thing is event-driven. In other words, when you do something, you create an event, and that event is acted upon um, immediately. Well, this is great, but the people who developed uh, web pages were a little discouraged with the server side because it's usually been the uh, the uh, the uh, what am I looking for? domain of um, <clears throat> using Apache and you know, PHP and Perl, Ruby on Rails, whatever. Uh, big, hairy, complicated nest over on the other side. Until um, uh, this Node.js um, concept came along, which is JavaScript on the server side. So now the client and server interface is all JavaScript. Everything became much more efficient. The complex Ajax um, blobs of code that you had to go through to get things moved back and forth. They're gone. You do these with one lines of code connecting things. Um, and it's also asynchronous event driven, so things work faster and better. So it's, it's rapidly becoming um, the thing. 
Well, it turns out, well, that's what effective client service is for. But uh, somebody wrote a node for, I mean, a module for Node.js that uh, talks to microcontrollers. A, a nice um, way to interface and be able to talk um, to all these little devices that we uh, play with all the time. So now the concept of, wait a minute, we can take all this efficiency, all this happens right now, handle it right now. We can port all that down to microcontrollers and boom, the, the, uh, it took off uh, even more. And now there's another branch that goes off into robots and through Johnny Five and all these frameworks for taking the same concept down into robots themselves. I want to go the direction of using this technology for the internet of things. So what's an event-driven thing? Um, uh, in JavaScript, anytime something occurs, it's called an event and has a handler associated with it, which is just basically a function that's going to be called as soon as this event occurs, whether it's a click or rollover or whatever. 